a lot of this debate of the Olympics about your joyous celebration. Uh, do you think the media made too much out of it? Uh, and do you think it might be we might see some choreography here at the Queens next two weeks? Um, I don't know. I, I read zero press, so that's always been my policy since I was 17. So I don't really know what was made too much and what was too little. But um, I think winning the Olympics was awesome for me and for the USA. And it was just, um, I'm still kind of in the Olympic moment. I love the Olympics. And, you know, I was just so proud when we finally had the final tally of gold medals that I had contributed to. So it was really awesome. How does one um, keep their body maintaining it, you know, doing something as rigorous as the Olympics and then coming right to the honeymoon with the Olympic stamina? I think you maintain it before you start. Like, I knew I would have a really long summer, so I knew going into this I really needed to be fit, and I really needed, I knew what I needed to do, and so that's kind of what I tried to do. You also opened here in New York, one of your best friends, Lala Anthony, and close to her uh, last night. Uh, you guys link up, do anything interesting here? Yeah, I've seen her two or three times, two times, and we're supposed to hang out later today, so. I'm excited. It's always good to relax with her. She's she's a great. She's really just so easy and so chill. A lot of Americans came to prominence during the Olympics. Some of them names we never heard before. Is there any one fellow American who stood out to you that you met and that you were inspired by, or maybe was inspired by you? Well, I didn't get to meet many of the Americans because I mean we were at the tennis. Our our event began like as soon as. Um, the turn the, the Olympics began, so by the time the tennis was over, then you know, you did, I didn't get to meet anyone. But I think obviously, I think Michael Phelps still stand out, even though we already know him. And I think um, Gabri Gabrielle Douglas really was able to stand out and do some fantastic things. Speaking of your Olympic brother, Gabby Douglas, she came under a lot of people were upset apparently about her hair and didn't like the way her hair looked. Uh, what, what's your opinion on people picking on her hair when she lost her over there when you go met on? I know uh, hair was a big thing for you and your sister growing up with the bees, bees and things like that. So what's your opinion on people picking on her about that? Um, I don't know about that too much. I got asked that question though and I think um, I have no comment. I think her hair was great and I think, you know, at the end of the day it isn't about that. It's about how you flip and what a great athlete you are and what you've achieved and everything that you've become and that's what she's been able to do to achieve so much and keep an amazing, beautiful smile on her face. The youngest player in the tournament, Victoria Duval, said that if she played someone like you, uh, she would ask for your autograph after the match. When you made your US Open debut 14 years ago, was there anyone whose autograph you wanted uh, that was on the court at the time? Um, yeah, I just always, I've always looked up to Pete Sampras when I was younger. And I think he was retiring that year, my rookie year. So um, I wanted to meet him, and I always loved Monica Sellers. And so I think those are two people that I really looked up for. To. You're pretty much the one to be here for most of the field. How much do you enjoy or not the disposition? Um, you got to embrace it, you, whether you're the, the favorite or the most to beat, or um, whether you are not. And I embrace it, you know, in Wimbledon, I wasn't a favorite, and I embrace that. So hopefully I can propel and do my best here. Serena, coming out of Cincinnati, you talked a little bit out of, uh, about you know, the long summer and feeling a little bit tired. So I'm wondering, do you feel like you got the rest you needed in the last few days? What, what have you been doing to sort of uh, recharge? Well, I definitely got, a, I took a couple days off after Cincinnati, and I think that helped me to like get myself together mentally and get ready for the U.S. Open, um, the biggest tournament in the United States. So um, I also think that, or I, what did I do? I just kind of came to New York really early and relaxed and karaoke and that was about it. So I'm to the first question I was asked. You of all people uh, know that the crib walk is not just a, a dance. So I was wondering, do you have any regrets Doing it uh, in front of everyone? Um, first of all, it's just a dance. I didn't know that's what it was called. And second, like, why are you asking me that? Like, that's so, I mean, if anything, you should be trying to ask me questions to lift me up, not bring such things like that. So, it was just the fact that. Yeah, you I'm done with that question. You didn't say the name of it, right? So I was it why. was, yeah. Oh, Serena, <laughs> um, about the physical pull of this year, 
any way to get ready for this? I look forward to it. I feel like I haven't played hardcore tennis this year. Like, I played Miami, and then I was into clay. So, I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, actually, and that's not true. I did play Brisbane in the outside. Um, and I played Fed Cup. Okay. But anyway, it feels like it wasn't like a normal hardcore season for me, because usually I go deeper in Australia, and or I'll do a little bit more somewhere else. So... I'm excited about this to be on hardcore. It's my favorite surface, and you know, it's, I have the opportunity to play on hardcore until um, March. So I look forward to this almost as like a launching pad for what I want to do for the rest of the hardcore season. Is there something different regarding the pressure for you when you're playing US Open regard or it's Wimbledon or French Open because it's your home event? No, I don't feel pressure. My dad always said the only pressure you have is the is the pressure you put on yourself. So I don't really feel any any pressure or anything. And I haven't put any pressure on myself. If I win, then that'd be great. If I lose, you know, I realize that I'm gonna go home and be devastated. But there's always tomorrow. Um, Victoria Azarenka was just out here. She won the Australian Open, and you know, we were asking her, you know, about you, uh, because Sam Stozer was also out here earlier and said, you know, you're in good form be the person to be. And obviously, you know, she beat you last year and you're probably hoping maybe if you're not going to get a rematch, you want to go to the final and win. Um, do you look that far ahead for the US Open? I haven't even seen the draw. I never like to know who I play or when I feel like, only like to know when. Um, so I think, you know, if you're thinking about just players to beat, you have to put Sam Stoser in there as defending champ. This court kind of suits her game and I think it suits her style. And she plays really well on it. Obviously, Victoria's a great player. She went on that unbelievable winning streak. I, you know, I don't think anyone can pretty much forget that. So um, she's doing well. And um, so yeah, so it's just it's some good some good tennis going on. You you felt so much pride in representing the U.S. in the U.S. Olympics. When you do play here on U.S. soil, do you feel the love? Do you feel differently? I just think Olympics is. A totally different thing because you're playing for your country and you're rooting on your teammates and stuff like that so it's just super super cool and um, you know playing here it's it's like Olympics is almost more fun whereas you really want to win but if you don't then you want the USA to win but now here it's back to being a, a, a self person one person sport. Serena, Kim Fleischer said in here earlier today and she's asked about you and she said that to her you were the best player ever Um, I never think about that. I can't sit here and say I'm the best ever. I mean, that's just, um, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not worthy of that title. I'm just Serena, and I love playing tennis, and I'm good at it. And um, just because I'm good at it doesn't make me the best. But um, I think Kim, you know, she's had such a fabulous career, especially here at the Open. She just brings some special tennis, and she's always so bright, and she has such a, a positiveness about her that, you really want to, you can't help but wish her the best before. Who is the best, do you think? Who would you say is the best? I don't know. If you're going by titles, you have to go by that. Your sister, Venus, you mentioned uh, not being able to imagine competing on a tour without you playing as well. Is that something that you have thought about, possibly her retirement before you play yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, I would have to go on if she decided to retire tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. I'll be devastated because... She's like, I can't get a better doubles partner than this. So, um, But no, we're going to, I don't know, if it was that soon, I would have to go on. But if it was a little later, maybe we'll be together. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Am I doing